Kim Deal from the Breeders is online tonight with me from uh, Oakwood. Yes, Oakwood, Ohio. Oakwood, Ohio. Kim, welcome to Triple J. Thanks. As I said, leadership, leadership. What's leadership mean to you? Um, leadership. I don't know. I guess the way the way it's leadership, and then it's called ship afterwards. Leadership. It means something like a president or some politics, because only because they use that kind of leadership and politic, and they use all those words, don't they? What do you think makes a good leader? Um, let me see. What do I make? Think? Somebody who doesn't feel like they're leading, but they're just. Um, they make you want to do something. Not not somebody who can get you to do what they. Not somebody who can get you to do what you don't want to do, but somebody who can actually get you to want to do that thing that you don't want to do. <laughs> That's a good leader, I think. A con artist. Almost not not because of a bad thing or a good thing, but for some reason could get through and make you know that that would be a good thing to do, and then you believe that that would be a good thing to do, and then you do it. So there's a bit of there's a bit of sleight of hand happening. Yeah, or just maybe a good communicator, so that they would, so it wouldn't be um, under the table. It would be well. This is why I think you should do it. Blah 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 blah. <laughs> and that's not under the table, really, is it? Not at all. Somebody, somebody's good at at uh, you know charming or something maybe. I don't know. Well, with all of that in mind, what do you reckon, Kim Deal, as a leader? I'm excellent. <laughs> <laughs> I am. I don't do most of the stuff. They do it. So that's probably why they like me. Are you talking about the other members in the band? Yeah, all the breeder people. I don't do T-shirts or money or anything. They have to do that. They have to do a lot of stuff. <laughs> I think it's because I've done this before and I've done interviews before, and so I don't have to be the person that they interview. I don't have to have my picture in the paper. I don't have to do anything. So whatever they want to organize is fine. Do you know what I mean? That's a good thing, though. It's not laziness. It's just... It's good, I think. So you can, you can, kind, you can control things without appearing to be a control freak? Oh, absolutely, yeah. It's the best position to be in, really, isn't it? Yeah. But, not that, but, but they do it anyway. I like what they do anyway. And I'm sure that they like what I do. So... It's just never been split as an issue like that. A lot of, um, I think, uh, I think because Charles went around saying, um, "I am, I am the Pixies. I'm the dictator in this band." When I went over to Europe to do interviews, I, I don't know how many people came up and asked uh, journalists would sit down and go, "So Kim, are you the dictator of this band?" And just, oh God, shut up. <laughs> no, because there, I mean, he wasn't either. I think he act like that because. You know, it's cool to have an asshole who's a lead singer. You know, I like that. I stand behind that. But he would never go into a room and go, Jim? I mean, uh, oh, there's no Jim in our band, was there? No, there was Joe, <laughs> David, and Kim. It wasn't that, it wasn't that, it wasn't that long ago, Kim. Uh, it was about a year and a half ago since I've seen uh, Charles, anyway, and Joe. I've seen David, but not Joe and Charles. They've been touring. They've been busy, though. But um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, he would never go into the band practice and say it. He just said that, but it was funny. But now a lot of people tend to think that that might have a real, it was the essence of how, of, of, of things, and that now the breeders, Kim, are you the dictator? It's like they, could, they would kill me, just like we would kill Charles. No way. You can't make people do stuff like that. A good, like I said, a good, I think a good leader is somebody who makes you think that that's what you want to do. And I have these people way convinced of that. <laughs> okay. What about being the centre of attention, which is something completely different? Mm. How, how does how does that sit with Kim Deal? I don't know. Again, it's a weird. I always have these weird questions. It's a weird question. If I was a guy, I don't think you'd be asking if I. How does it feel to be the centre of attention? That kind of desire is only given to women, because only women want to be centre of attention. Men, they have a stronger purpose or more of a reason to be out there. You would have another couple of questions, another couple of dumb, no, no, just kidding. <laughs> but with, the reason why is because I saw this um, review, it said, well, I can understand Kim wanting to be the center of attention, but the center of attention and such a lousy band. But I thought to myself, gee, the only reason why he's even saying center of attention is because I'm a girl. 
So I, therefore, the only reason why I'm doing music is, is to be music is to be the center of attention. I hope the band does get attention, though. I do hope so. I hope readers do. I hope people go to our shows, you know, and like the music. Well, we'll talk. I had ab- plenty of attention in the Pixies anyway, didn't I? I was fine. Was sorry, what was that? I had plenty of attention in the Pixies. There's not like I get more now or even less. So we got we got. Black Francis, Frank Black, whatever you care to call him these days, we got his version of events. I don't want to dig up dirt. I don't want to dig. I, I don't want to dig up ancient history. But we have had we have we have had his version on Triple J of the events of what happened to you guys the interviewed or, or or something. Sorry, you guys interviewed him or something. I spoke to him. Yeah, we got no, his we got his version. I think it's only fair we get your version. Oh, I don't want to. I don't care. Well, I say whatever he says. <laughs> Whatever he says happened, happened. Okay. Well, can I can I tell you what he said and you tell me uh, yes or no? You agree or you disagree? Okay. Oh, all right. All right. I mean, he didn't he didn't a soap opera? Oh well, look, he was he was reluctant as hell to talk about it as well. I managed to sort of squeeze a little bit out of him, but anyway, just let let me indulge for a moment, Kim, and then I'll promise I'll move on. Okay. He said five albums was enough for the Pixies. Do you agree or disagree? You know, if he thinks it, then definitely. Or if Joe thought it, I would definitely agree. Even if David thought it, I would definitely agree. If I thought it, I would definitely agree. Just because Charles is the lead singer doesn't mean that what he has to say about the band is any less important than any four of us, than any than the rest of the three. Absolutely. If he's tired of it, he should definitely quit. I'm asking. He ever, did he ever play down there? We never did. The Pixies never did. No. No, he hasn't come here yeah. either. Now, Belly's been down there, haven't they? Who? Tanya, Belly. Yeah, they came here a couple of months ago. Yeah, we're supposed to come. Oh, we'll just y- never make it. No, that's right. A couple of months ago, you guys were supposed to tour as well, but that fell yeah. through. Yeah, we were supposed to go with Pavement first, but then I don't know what happened. They went on down, and what did we do? I heard you had more important things to do. That's what I heard. <laughs> I think we've just finished the album. <laughs> it's kind of important. <laughs> One more thing. One more thing he said. One more thing he said was oh, that. Oh, I'll look. I'll look. I know I'm bothering you. I'm bothering you because I'm the interviewer. You're the interviewee, and that's the way it's supposed to work, apparently. Okay. The Pixies were just a band, he said. The Pixies were just a band. What's the big deal? You know, me and Josephine just did a big European tour, and some guy in Belgium said, "Hub Charles from the Pixies, from whatever his name is, came around." And I don't like the way he reduces the Pixies now. He reduces them. And Josephine had a really good point. But what you don't understand, Mr. Journalist, is that when we're down for other things, like the Breeders or Frank Black material, you guys mentioning the Pixies actually is reducing what we're here for. We're talking about, so I would imagine that Charles just gets a little bit, a little bit hoofy puffy why he's taken all this time out to talk about the new album, and all that anybody wants to talk about is the, is the Pixies. Or the breeders. <laughs> so, so for him to like talk, it's a you guys are doing the reducing. He's not. He's not doing that. He's being forced to play that hand. I mean, can't you? You can see that, can't you? That's just like bartending psychology 101. That it takes to to perceive that. Do you understand? I I, I understand entirely. I understand yeah. entirely. But don't you also understand uh, understand that the Pixies were. A fantastic band. Mm-hmm. People were interested in the Pixies. They went out and bought their records. They went yeah. out and loved the music. They saw yeah. them live. It meant a whole lot to a whole lot of people. Yeah. Why can't we ask what happened? Oh, you can. I think so. But didn't he already... Oh, no, I guess you can't. Well, you can. You asked him, didn't you? <laughs> and you asked me. I know. No, I, you're right. I know. I think he just really wanted to do his own solo stuff. You know, he had these ideals of working with synthesizers and stuff, and and that's good, I think, you know? That, you know what I mean? Even though it's not what you, what you like or something, it's, it's it's what he wanted to do. So I think all the more for him, all the, you know what I mean? Sure, sure. Yeah. You, can't, you can't tell someone to stay put forever. Things have to change. Yeah, I guess so. Well, Rolling Stones are still together, aren't they? <laughs> How do you feel about that? I like the Rolling Stones, although, you know, we're, a lot of people were saying, even around Miss You or some girls, they were saying, oh, the Rolling Stones have been around too long. But that, I love all the early albums, and I even like some girls, but I don't think I like anything after some girls. 
bit patchy up bit, bit patchy after that point i loved i loved waiting on a friend i still reckon that's one of the best rolling stone songs is that on some girls no, Waiting on a Friend was on Emotional Rescue. Rescue. It was the one, yeah. I tried to listen to that album. I thought that was a weird album. I like that song, yeah. That, yeah. That... <laughs> That's Emotional Rescue, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> okay. And then they had Start Me Up. Remember Start Me Up? Remember that song? That, that wasn't too bad either. Yeah. Okay. How, how long do you reckon Kim Deal, then, is going to stay in the music biz? I don't know. I'll pro probably be like the Rolling Stones too long. <laughs> <laughs> and enjoying every minute of it. Yes. We haven't been to Australia yet or Japan. You haven't even begun, have you? Mm -mm. No. No, we've got to get up north in Canada, too. We've been to the, you know, the provinces of Canada that are, that are near the border of the states, but we haven't been really far up. So we, we need to do that. We need to play Alaska. I need more, to spend way more time at Christian. What is it, Christiana in Denmark, Copenhagen? <laughs> You're the world traveler, not me. <gasps> Speaking of traveling, though, the album seems to be going uh, down very well in Good. in England. Yeah, do you think so? Well, the album actually hasn't been released since until August 31st, but the, the single it was released, Cannonball. Now, you guys are from Triple J, Triple J, Triple J. The new alphabet. Triple Jacks. Tri triple Jacks. It's now, when you guys, uh, now that was good because the, the Rec 4 AD, when they said, oh, guys got kind of some rotation on Triple J, they were thrilled. Was that, is that, that's a good thing, isn't it? Because there's like one radio station in Australia, and it's Triple J, I heard. Yeah, that's right. There's no other radio stations <laughs> here. <laughs> <laughs> See why we think there's kangaroos all over the place. We believe everything everybody tells us. Well, you should. Yep. Yeah. We're the only station. <laughs> You're lying now. I'm not. <laughs> well, I'm telling the truth when it's on rotation, though, and that is a good thing. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk. Let's talk about Cannonball because okay. um, I did a, I did, I, I do a thing called the J Jury, where I get listeners to ring in and say what they reckon of a song. Everyone loved Cannonball. So oh, good. Has anyone come up to you and said, "Gee, I hate Cannonball"? <laughs> no. Oh no. Uh -uh. But I'm sure there's some UK journalists just waiting to do that. <laughs> <laughs> No, people seem to like it. It's great. They do. I like it. I was gonna. That was. I was gonna ask you that. So, yeah. did you like it when you were recording it in the studio? Yeah. Yeah, I liked it a lot. We, there's a there's a line in the song that happens a couple of times. It says, "I'll be your whatever you want." The bong in this reggae song. Do you guys know what a bong is? Don't you? A bong. B O N G. Right. Ah, uh, you guess. Well, we put that on MTV. Well, we tried to get it played on MTV because Kim Gordon directed the video for Cannonball. Have you seen it yet? We have. It's a great video. Oh, isn't it good? Didn't they do a good job? Were they all Kim's ideas? You know, a lot of them were, but then a lot of them were mine. Well, no, she didn't end up using anything that we came up with, which is a good thing. A lot of them were that guy, Spike Jones, that she that works with. He's a uh, photographer for this little, ma kind of like, did you guys get sassy down there? Sassy? Sassy magazine. Uh, it's not on. It's not on my magazine rack in the in the local newsagent. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, it's kind of a male version of Sassy magazine. It's called Dirt. So Spike w Jones is a photographer for Dirt, and magazine, and he helped uh, Kim Gordon put put the video together. It was his idea, I think. With the he also did the skateboarding shots on 100. percent So he got a uh, skateboard on this video, and he traveled after the cannonball with his camera. I asked him how, why he didn't crash. He said it's because he doesn't look through the camera. He just holds the camera. He oh. looks at where he skates. Oh, that's cheating. <laughs> that's not being a real photographer. <laughs> it seems like, how, well, how does he make sure the cannonball's in frame? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't know from video. Uh, but anyway, they just played it on MTV, and they bong, they beeped out the bongs. This in the reggae song. Oh, God. How did, you actually, feel, how did you feel when you saw that? Well, it was a bummer because they actually don't use beeps anymore because MTV up in the States, they like to appear, you know, hip. So um, if they were known to censor things, then their uh, useful audience wouldn't probably like it. So what they do is they try to make it as natural as possible for the audience. So they don't use beeps anymore, really. They go, the uh, goes, I'll be there. Da -da 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 the and the whole music just stops. The drag. <laughs> <laughs> Until that word passes. 
Ah, uh, they want to get in on the act. They want to start producing records, I reckon. Mm-hmm. There you go. I'm, I'm curious. I mean, this is uh, a bit of a strange question, but I'm curious as to how little pieces come up in the studio and what the thought processes are behind them. The beginning to Cannonball, it's a very weird sound. Why did that come up? Well, there uh, is. I knew I wanted to do that through the song. It's like a oompa, oompa, oompa d, whatever d. You know that Willy Wonka thing? Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Those little oompas walking around. Oh, oh, like a working man, working the chain gang kind of sound, isn't it? I don't know. It's just got a kind of like a nice uh, ridge to it. Oh, like it swells a little bit. So I was, of course, I was using my distorted, you know, amplifier. So I just started. We just started it up like that. So what on earth prompted that thought to come to your mind at that point? I don't know. I don't know. And Josephine then goes da 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 and it was and she's like a one flat she's like a she's flattened her bass out. She's like one step down. So oh that sounds cool, Josephine, but it was a mistake, Kim. Oh she do that all the time. So now she has to do her mistake over and over again. Because <laughs> she starts low and then she has to pull up to the right key. So that she thinks it sounds good too though. Tonight on Triple J I'm chatting with Kim Deals from the Breeders. Okay, well, we just found out that Willy Wonka was a source of inspiration for the new album. <laughs> what, what else? What else was inspirational you for know, you? My sister read this biography of the Marquis de Sade. She was reading it, and I'm just teasing him. I'm going, "Oh, okay, you little libertine. Oh, you're a real cuckoo." Just like if you want to go to hell, we call them cannonballs. Jump in. It's when you tuck your legs in and you make the biggest splash you can. What do you guys call that? Bombers or water bombs or something? Bombing. Bombing. So it's like a bombing. So do a cannonball, make the biggest splash, and I'll be the last splash in the hell. So I'm like making fun of Marquis de Sade a little bit. But then I found out he sucked the snot out of other people's noses, and it's like, whoa, you win, big guy. (laughs) Hands down. (laughs) Absolutely. Did a lot of the stuff for the album Last Splash, did a lot of that stuff just sort of pop up at the moment in the studio? Little, like little switches and stuff, but like little um, man- manipulation of, of stops and starts sometimes do because you got the whole you got a whole submix to make. What happens if the whole band stops here? You know, instead of telling them, I just push the switch. They hate that when I do that. <laughs> I could imagine. Uh huh. But a lot, most of I mean, we wrote all the songs before we got there, so we pretty much knew what we were gonna do. I've been listening to the album just on a pre-release cassette. It doesn't actually detail who's written the songs. Have you written yeah. all of them? Well, we kind of, I've just come up with a riff and we kind of bang them out all together downstairs in the basement. But I wrote the words to all of them, um, mainly because I just have to sing them. Except for Kelly sings a lead song. Uh, she sings one uh, called I Just Want to Get Along. And that's the one that, uh, and she sings that one. Uh, that's interesting. I was going to ask you about that song because I didn't know who sang that one. I couldn't actually pick your voices apart when I listened to it. You can't. No, you really can't. Even on the phone, my mom and dad sometimes have to say, now, which one am I talking to? <laughs> yeah. Well, well, for people who don't know, your uh, twin sister, Kelly, is a, a member of the Breeders as well. Who was, yeah. born, who was born first? She was 11 minutes before me. Ooh, you've got the big sister syndrome, though, it seems. <laughs> No, I don't. I don't even know if we do it like that. If we're like, one, if we consider one older than the other, at different times it changes depending on the situation. Right now we're mad at each other. She's so she's not here at the house. How come? Because she met this really nice boy while we while we were San Fr- while we were in San Francisco recording, and he's come and stayed with her a little bit. She she stays with me in the house, but then her boyfriend comes too and lives with me, and he's been here for about three weeks or so. My I got my I got rid of my boyfriend. He lives a few down, you know, some streets over. So now I have to live with her boyfriend. <laughs> it's like, girls, if you can't find a guy, buy a house. <laughs> you got him all over the place then. <laughs> I'm mad at her. I'd get, I'd get mad at her as well. Yeah, she's really mad at me, actually. She went out in a huff with her bags. Is, is, it, is, it the fact, is, it, is, sorry, is it the fact that he is there or is it the fact that you don't like him? I liked him. No, see, now that's what they do. They think, oh, they, she just doesn't like Daniel. That's his name, Daniel. Presley, just like Elvis. He does a good Elvis imita- imitation, too. No, he's a nice enough guy. He's a little young for her, I think. You know? <laughs> but he's nice enough. But it's just that, I, you know, I, 
for three, you know, it's been here for week after week. After, it's time, you know, it's like the, the company that won't go home. It's time for him to go someplace else now. I, she just gets mad at me. I think, I think the reason she's got really mad at you, and I've noticed this when I've, I've said to people, don't you think, well, I, have actually, I don't think I've actually ever done it, but I've seen it happen a lot when people say, don't you think they're just a little young for you? <laughs> no, I, I, no not, not really. I think he is perfect. Because she, she's kind of immature, too. <laughs> <laughs> this is a Get Kelly session. <laughs> Poor Kelly. But nonetheless, she did sing one of the songs on the album. I just want to get along. And she doesn't want to get along. That's, I think that's apparent. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm just going to have to. I don't know. Good discipline. I know. It's hard. It's hard. Raising kids. Tonight on Triple J, we're listening to tracks from the new album by The Breeders. It's called Last Splash, and I'm also, cat um, I'm also catting, I nearly said. I'm also chatting with Kim Deal <laughs> online from Oakwood in the USA. Yeah, Oakwood, Ohio. Oakwood, Ohio. You, you guys actually, you and your sister Kelly actually grew up in Dayton, Ohio. Is that right? Uh, well, it's really close to here, right? It's like, you know, five minutes down the street, Dayton. See, we just say Dayton because that's the closest city around us, but we actually grew up in Huber Heights, Ohio. And I'm living in Oakwood. But, yeah, you can just say Dayton because it's all the same. You know, don't know much. Nobody, I don't know much. Know. Sorry. I don't know much about Dayton. I know a little bit about Akron, Ohio, in that Chrissy Hind and Devo both came yeah. from, from that yeah. city. They're up north. They, they're up north, and we're all the way at the bottom, very bottom border near Kentucky. And everybody down here talks with a kind of a white trash accent. I like that accent. <laughs> so who famous has come out of Dayton? You know, a lot of funk bands have come out of Dayton. Um, Ohio Players, um, Roger Troutman Studios uh, are, are here in Dayton. You dropped a bomb on me, baby. You dropped a bomb on me. You know that song? No. <laughs> Who else? Midnight Stars, their Cincinnati funk band. A lot of funk. A lot of funk music, a lot eh? Of funk. Yeah. Hey, guess what? What? They're showing your film clip. I've got the TV on in the studio. They're showing, uh, they're Cannonball? showing ca Cannonball right at this very moment on the TV. Doesn't it look good? It looks real good. That it's was the first video Kim Gordon ever did. We just asked her. I didn't know her or anything. I wasn't friends with her. It was really, I was really nervous when I asked her. I thought she wouldn't want to do it. But she said, yeah, she'd do it. She heard the song and liked it. And now she's getting job offers all the time to do videos for bands. She's got a second career now, doesn't she? Do you know any of the other, I mean, has she uh, sort of... She hasn't actually done one because she's, she did Lollapalooza with Free Kitten, like the second stage. After she did our video, she did some shows with Sonic Youth, and then through the summer they did, free, they did Lollapalooza with Free Kitten. That's that band she's in with that Pussy Galore woman, Julie somebody. And then now she's getting ready to do the second video for us, Divine Hammer. That's that poppy one on there. And uh, I don't know how, how she's going to get the time to do other bands' videos, too. But she'll find out. Okay. Find it, I guess. All right. Uh, let's just back to Dayton for a moment. Funk music, then. The, uh, I mean, did you, is that the sort of music you grew up on? There was a lot of it here, yeah. My brother really liked it, too, yeah. But no, because I hated it because I, you know, and I hated disco. I liked, you know, heavy metal music. I liked heavy metal music. What, Black Sabbath? Oh, Absolutely. Absolutely. That's funny. I was speaking with Tanya from Belly, mm. and uh, she w we did a thing called um, A High Five. She played five songs that changed her life, and one of them was Black Sabbath, and she dedicated it to you. Oh, isn't that sweet? Which one was it? Paranoid, maybe? Paranoid. Oh, see, she knows I love that song. And that changed her life. <laughs> That's hilarious. She said that you were the influencing force for Black Sabbath on her. Oh, isn't that great? Oh, she just came out and visited a few weeks ago. I can't hear a lot of Black Sabbath in the Breeders, though. You don't? No. You don't? Well, like in Saints, there's that one section that goes... Do you know that one Black Sabbath song that goes... Yeah, everyone knows that one. Now, we did a song, but we called this the Zep section, but not the Sab section. I don't know why, but it goes... Da, 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 da. But really, that was picked up from the lead from, like, when the saints go marching in or when the saints go marching in. <laughs> <laughs> and it's done over a Sabbath thing. But we ended up calling it the Zep section. But there is a Zep section that's on Raw. It goes da-da-da-da-da-da. Da, 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 da. Do you know that 
goes like that. Don't hop a se- don't don't get ahead of. I want to talk about Roy as well, but let's go back okay. to um, uh, um, Jesus. I've, I've, just, <laughs> I've forgotten the word name of the song already. Saints. Actually, yes. the uh, after saying all that, um, the thing that it rem- Saints reminded me of was the Beatles for some reason. I did it really. That's interesting. Can can pom pom tip tip pom pom can can. I wonder what which song. Oh, you know, somebody else told me that. You're not the first person to say that. They said it sounds like you can. Maybe you can drive my car. Uh, 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 uh. Do you know? Maybe that's what it is. That could be it. Is that you're the second person who said that that leap? Well, no, it's you know it's when the Saints go marching in. I I took it from that. I think I was obsessed with when the Saints go marching in. I played it all the time for about a year and a half. I was obsessed with that lead. I don't know why. You don't you don't know, have any idea? No, it's just something about the way it goes back and forth, and it's so easy to play. But I get so confused most of the time when I play it. Weird. <laughs> 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 I think I remember playing playing my recorder at school to the, when the Saints go marching in. I think I've just had a, a deja vu experience. <laughs> Saints from yeah. the sorry, I'm I'm sort of slotting in the tracks around. I'm going to mix some music in later. So sorry, okay. it sounds a bit stilted at times, but that's Rob. all right. Saints from Last Splash. The new album for the Breeders. Kim Deal is still online tonight. Let's talk about. Um, I want to talk about. Uh, Jeez, Jesus, I've got... Hang on a second. I've got mental yeah. blocks happening. Hang on a second. I want to talk I want to talk about... That's right. You mentioned it. It was going to be the single. I want to talk to you about um, the next single from the album, Divine Hammer. Mm-hmm. Is this a, is this a drug song? Yeah, well, I don't... Well, you know, good question. <laughs> it's, a, it's about existential angst, really, isn't it? I'm just looking for these things, for some divinity to come down. And you know what? I don't think there is anything... So I can think I can find my divinity in different ways. The hammer of a syringe, that's not really, it's not really, I don't use syringe drugs, but you could use drugs to find your divine, your divinity. So it's, it's kind of an open-ended thought then. That. Well, I'm kind of, I'm kind of pretty much decided that, you know, there, gee, there's just not much, is there? What are you waiting for? Well, you know... With all the you know the Christian songs and everything, they use all of these things. You know, if you go around the mountain and if you if you work hard with the hammer and you meet a carpenter called Jesus Christ and you travel miles and miles, all these stupid symbolisms that people, groups that folk Christian folk groups will use. Well, you know, I don't know what I'm looking for, but everybody tells me that if I keep looking, I'm going to find divinity one day or a faith or something. And you know what? I haven't found shit. Have you? <laughs> I haven't. I'm not even looking. <laughs> With my eternal optimism, then I guess. <laughs> although, although I did hear a very witty saying the other day, in that uh, it was a religious program. They were talking about the search for meaning, and they said that there is no end result in the search for meaning; that the meaning was the search. Right, it's the journey, not the goal. Well, that sucks, doesn't it? <laughs> it's a bit of a letdown. <laughs> I think if you went all that way, you'd eventually reach something. Exactly. You had any sort of um, religious upbringing? No, no, not really. My mom took us to Sunday school when we were young. My dad couldn't care less. He never attended with us. He doesn't believe. No way. Uh-uh. But my mom, I think she does. And that wasn't a... That, I think someone's inter- interfered on our line. Hello? Oh, have they? Hello? Hello? Sorry, I thought someone had come in our end. I think the operator had come in. Have you got more interviews after this one? No, uh uh-uh. That's what I thought. So I was I was being leisurely about it. So um no problem. that's cool. I just thought the next caller might have been interrupting. No. So that that uh religious um nature of your mother didn't sort of rub off in any way. No, uh, she wasn't really that religious either. You know, when she they grew up in a coal mining camp in West Virginia, very, very white trash in the Appalachian Hills. Um and uh their, their, their own type of religion is kind of real weird. Like, uh, you go to church on Sunday, and, of, and you're very pious that day, but the rest of the, night, the week, and especially Saturday night, you know, drinking, fighting with your husband, pulling out the steak knives in the kitchen, cussing, just getting really drunk, but then very piously going to church on Sunday. I think she was raised in that kind of a way. Not that she does it. She doesn't go to church now. She also doesn't pull out kitchen knives.
<laughs> but her parents did. I, 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 we just talked about it a little bit ago. Nobody knows who's born from who. They shouldn't know where she comes from. She's left on some doorstep in West Virginia. Very weird. Coal mining camp. A little baby on a coal miner. With, on a coal mining camp. Very strange. And they, they came from Tater Holler. Get it? Potato, like Irish. There was also Tally Hill, where the Italians lived, I guess. But that's what they called these places to, as geograph- geographical names. Tater Holler, Tally Hill. Isn't that weird? It is. Just, you know, call <laughs> Simple names, huh? <laughs> For simple people. <laughs> Very strange. Uh, there's a lot of strange things about America. A lot of strange things about America. What, yeah. I mean, uh, just in terms of religion as well. I mean, if I see one more athlete, one more award winner, one uh, more actor get up God. on stage and thank God, I don't know what I'm going to start to believe. Not all of them can, not all of them could have spoken to him personally. I know, I know. It's very. It's, you know, I guess it's a good thing that they seem like they're... But I've met a lot of Christian people who aren't that nice. So just because you say you believe in God doesn't automatically mean that you're a good person or that you act like a good Christian, really. My dad would, is the most humble man filled with humility and, and, and goodness, and, and he doesn't believe in God. And he, he, not at all. He just thinks his whole idea is stupid. But he's a good guy, really. Whereas my mom can sometimes be really mean and, oh, but she believes in God, you know. <laughs> it's weird, isn't it? Contradictions. Yeah. Must be a pressure type situation, though, in the States to believe in God. You must be really out on the fringe if you don't. I think there's enough room for people to, do, to believe in all, in all sorts of different things. I, I don't think other people feel pressure. Maybe if they had a family who really, 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 really believed in God, it would be different. But my family were just kind of um, like one didn't, one kind of did. I mean, one does, but doesn't do anything about it. My mom doesn't go to church now. Okay. Enough about religion. Let's talk about surf music. Because there's a surf song on the album. That flip side song, do you think that sounds surfy? Yeah. Really? Oh, that's good. So where, where, where did this, because the Pixies had a touch of it as well, that surf influence. Yeah. Where did that pop up? I don't really know. It's just um, when it comes to instrumentals, usually I think that there's a more of a tendency to, to make it sound surfy. Like, for instance, Green Onion, that's, that's, a, that's a name of a song. That's an instrumental. Um, but, and even Tequila, Tequila, but uh, 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 that's just, that's, but just because there's no vocals doesn't... I think everybody lumps in instrumentals as surfy. You know what I mean? Yeah, but this one has a different beat. Flipside yeah. has more of a Thanks. Avengers type beat. Well, that would be cool. That's good. I like that, the Avengers. We, we, we were big Avenger fans. Josephine loves Emma Peel. What, is, what does it do to you? What, the Avengers stuff or the surf... Or Flipside, the instrumental? Generally, like generally, the whole sort of genre of surf music. Oh, yeah, I like it. I like it. I, I tend to like uh, the, the outfits that they wore, the matching outfits that a lot of surf bands would wear with the white trousers and the matching striped shirts. I like that. There wasn't a lot of girls that were involved with surf music, so it's, there's nothing really there. I like uh, country and western, I think, the guitar, tw- tw- I like their guitar sounds. And so some surf songs have good guitar sounds. But I don't know if I could make a surf song up. I don't know what it takes to make a surf song up. Why didn't you make up Flipside? Yeah, but I did, I don't know. I think that that's just like an instrumental. I don't know why it sounds like a surf song. Believe me, it's a surf song. I wonder why. <laughs> because it's got a lead guitar doing a melody, melody all the way through it? I wonder. Uh, Is there something about the drum progression or something? Da, 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 da. That sounds like a big band. Da, 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 da. Or a cartoon. Da, 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 da. Like a Tom and Jerry cartoon. Well, there is that influence in surf music. It does have that character to it. Mm. Yeah, I guess so. Kind of smug and superficial or something, you know, superficially happy, do you think? It's not mournful and bleak like some country and western songs are, are they? Well, speaking of country and western, there's also one of those on the album. Mm-hmm. Driving on. Nine. I didn't write that song. Some guy... Uh, 
in a band called Edge Redeeming Qualities did. They were friends of mine in Boston. And we actually tried to demo that for our first album, Pod. And uh, we just, we just had never got to it. But then the violinist who played on Pod, her name is Carrie Bradley, and she was also in Edge Redeeming Qualities. She also played on this album, Last Splash. So we tried it, th- we tried it this time, and it sounds really good. It works well. Yeah, I like it. The guy, Dom Leone, he wrote it from Edge Redeeming Qualities. He's not alive anymore. He died in 89 from cancer. So did you kind of do it as a tribute as well? No, this was, uh, we had tried it before he died for Pod, up for the demos, like I said. We just didn't get it to putting it on the album. So we actually did it this time. I love the way it sort of falls right at the end of the album because the whole album sort of, there's a whole lot of surprises just around the corner as you listen to it. Sort of things pop, things pop up that you don't expect to pop up and that's one of them. That's one of those moments. Oh, that's good. That is a good thing. Okay, just a couple more questions and I'll let you fly. Okay. Driving on from Last Splash, the album from The Breeders, and tonight on Triple J, Kim Deal has been chatting along with me all about the album, so you must be pretty happy at the moment. Yeah, yeah, I really like it still. I I still like the album. (laughs) I do. As opposed to some of the other records you made in the past? Uh, No, just sometimes... um, I think it's just because there's enough instrumentals that I can still listen to it. Because I don't think singers like to listen to their own voice. They never go, oh, I love it when I sing this note. It gives me chill bumps. So it's nice to have a couple on there that I don't sing that I can still like, you know. So you're one of these people, you're one of these singers who cringe. Mm, Not so much cringe. I used to cringe, but I don't anymore because I'm pretty used to it now. So I don't cringe. But it doesn't rock my world to, to hear myself sing. Does it does it come across as you when you listen to it? Do you listen to it and go, you know, this is Kim Deal, this is me? Am I mortified and embarrassed? No. But would I, would I sit down and play my own records to relax too, to hear my voice? No, I wouldn't do that either. But I would play her instrumentals. Matthew Sweet, I, I interviewed him recently. He's just toured through Australia. And he said, now this may sound incredibly uh, pretentious, but he was very honest about it. He said that one of the main motivating factors for getting into music for him was that he wanted to make music that he would like to listen to. He felt there wasn't enough music in the world that he could listen to that he sort of, you know, had in his head that he really wanted to hear. Oh, that's good, yeah. Any any sort of that force in Kim Deal? Yeah, I guess you always... I think it's... Yeah, I guess everybody... Yeah, you want to make stuff that you... You see something and you think, wow, that would be... Yeah, I guess so, yeah. It's an interesting one because 99% of the people I speak to and musicians in general don't go home and listen to their own albums. I, now, I will if I'm not singing on it. I know, but that's, that's cheating. <laughs> what, that I don't like to listen to my own voice? Well, yeah, it's kind of like, you know, that's not the real thing. You should take it all. Yeah. Oh, well, I don't skip over, but I don't... Ah, uh, yeah. No, I just pretty much do skip over. Yeah. 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 No, it's just... It's it's funny. It's funny. It's a... It, it must be a funny thing, because it just being sort of like on a... Behind a microphone, I don't sing or anything like that, but just talking, it took a long time for me to actually listen and go, my God, is that me? <laughs> so I'm kind of curious whether singers have that same feeling as well. Yeah, I think so. Do, do you don't listen? You don't take your broadcast home and listen to them or anything, do you? Oh, I stopped that a while ago. <laughs> it used to keep me up late at nights. <laughs> That's funny. There's also a little bit of a, a naive nature to the breeders, which is uh, attractive, isn't it? I guess so. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Do you think so? Do you think so? Sure. Well, I've, I think so, and I think um, from most of the things that I've read, uh, people have commented on the fact that the the breeders are a quirky band and they're trying to figure out why they're quirky. Is it because they're naturally quirky or is it because they can't play their instruments very well? <laughs> well, Jim's a good musician and so is Josephine. And I'm not too bad, so I guess that only leaves one person really not, <laughs> that we're really talking about. See, when uh, Tanya started, went to start Belly after Safari, and Britt went home, and he started this band called the Palace Brothers in Louisville, Kentucky. Well, it was basically me and Josephine and Kelly, and I said to Kelly, Kelly, why don't you play the drums? You, she played drums in high school. Me and Charles from the Pixies actually paid for Kelly's plane ticket to go to, to fly her to Boston when we first started out 
to see if she would be our drummer, and she told us no. <laughs> so it was kind of a waste of money. <clears throat> but when we were putting the span, so when the so I asked her, Kelly, why don't you play drums? We can be a three-piece. I can play guitar, Josephine can play bass, and you can play the drums. Nirvana did it. We could be a three-piece. So anyway, Kelly goes, no, I don't want to play drums. And I said, okay, what do you want to play? I want to play lead guitar. But Kelly, you can't play guitar. I don't care. I want to play lead guitar anyway. That was pretty much how it went. <laughs> so she got to be the lead guitar player. Ah. Uh. <laughs> I'm glad I'm glad we've ended our interview tonight, Kim, by uh, trashing your sister. <laughs> she'll she'll get better. Leave her alone. She'll get better. <laughs> I have faith. Yeah, she will. Not bad for her first uh, album effort. No, and she did all the leads on the album. I don't doubt it. Yeah. Don't doubt it. So. No session musos here. No way. Pick a song. What's your favourite from the album? Oh, uh, let's do. Either Raw or Mad Lucas. Hey, let's do Mad Lucas. Good okay. one. Mad Lucas is a really intriguing song. It's so eerie. Is it weird, isn't it? I like it. How did that come about? Well, it was this old piece of music that we had again for Pod. The BBC had asked us. They said that they're doing a piece on kind of eccentrics for um, a series of eccentrics. And uh, like, for instance, one guy, Andrew Lloyd Webber, um, this man was sitting in a, in a, in a pub and somebody came up to him and said, you're Andrew Lloyd Webber. So what he did was he quit his job, he sold everything, and he registered himself to a lookalike agency. And you should hear Josephine tell the story. She goes, and of course he didn't get any calls, because no one wants a, a double of Andrew Lloyd Webber. They don't even want the real <laughs> Andrew Lloyd Webber. <laughs> She's funny when she says it. But anyway, so we uh, thought, okay, publicity, BBC, weird people. Well, there's this guy called Mad Lucas that, lives, that lived near Josephine's house in England, like in the middle of the last century. And he was a hermit. And what was weird about him was that he craved publicity. He loved it when the buses came in on Sundays and all the kids got out and they all talked to Mad Lucas. So we thought we'd write a song about him because he's a, he's a hermit and he wanted publicity. And mainly it's about Charles Dickens because Charles Dickens was one of the famous guests that, ta that went up to visit Mad Lucas. And sure, Charles Dickens was a big guy for social reform when he was young, but as he got old, he got really crotchety and real bitchy. And he was saying to this Mad Lucas guy, get up and clean your face. And Mad Lucas, this was all uh, reported in the London paper that Charles Dickens um, wrote for at the time. You know, he, a lot of his books were series of newspaper stories. And he said, you must rise. And Mad Lucas said, why? I'm fine where I am. Who are you, you stupid man? And Charles Dickens said, because eternal providence tells us to. So it was kind of just lame. People, again, people talking about eternal providence. What the hey is that? Mm. You mean that's a good reason why I have to do what you say? Because of the eter eternal providence. What does that mean? It's a cop-out. Yeah, just like one of those Christian symbols again. If I hit a hammer with a carpenter and I travel this many <laughs> miles, then I'm going to find something. Uh, Not. Leave mad Lucas B. Yeah. And that's how we'll leave it. Kim, thanks for your time tonight. You're very welcome. <laughs> Don't go anywhere. That was terrific. Thank you for that. Okay. Enjoyed that a lot. Yeah, I did too. The album is uh, going to be a feature album. It's going to be a feature album here at Triple J, which means that we play it every shift for over a week. Each week we have a different feature album. We just incidentally featured Cypress Hill. Oh, cool. So we, we vary. We play, you know... Right. A whole lot of different stuff from around the world. So anyway, this is going to be a feature album. What I'd like you to do, just and this will only take a couple of minutes and then I'll let you fly, okay. is, is to just say hi, who you are, from the Breeders. And Triple J this week is featuring our new album, Last Splash, and here's another track from it right now. Okay. Now, um, can I do this in a different way, what I want to do? That, that is the guideline. You can do it any way you want. But okay, it's... I'm going I'm to stick the phone right here, and then I'm going to go back a little bit, and I'm going to scream the entire thing, Okay. Okay. Do you want to? Um, uh, okay. We'll we'll try it once, and if if it distorts or if I don't get a good level, then we'll have to do it again. But anyway, give it a okay. shot. So wait a minute. Wait, wait, what did I say? I say that hi. This is Kim Deal from the Breezers. You're listening to Triple J, and Last Splash is the feature album this week. Uh, yeah, the triple and Last Splash is the feature album this week, and here's another track from it right now. Something like that. Okay. Hold on a sec. Okay. Are you ready for me? Uh, I'm re I'm ready whenever you are. All right.
What was that like? <laughs> Did you hear it at all? I, I heard bits of it. it it's just, uh, Some of the things were a bit muffled. <laughs> M- maybe if you take w- two steps a little closer. Okay. And the voice a little down, it might have the same impact and okay. and just uh, and we'll be able to hear it a little clearer. But try it again. Okay. Oh, wait, I could try this one. I could go like this. And I can just I could go like No, that, that, that one doesn't work because, okay. yeah, I'll because be it's... It, okay. Okay. Well, well, can I get you to do one? Can I get you to? Uh, I don't want to do. I don't want to get you to do something you don't want to do. <laughs> no. Uh. Uh-uh. How about if I pretending I'm playing piano? <laughs> and I stop and pause for a moment. You could try that one. Hi, this is Kim Deal from the Breeders, and you're listening to Triple J. Last Splash is a feature album this week, and here's another song off of it. Okay, I like that. One okay. more, qu- one more question. That was yeah. good. One more question. We've got a, we've got a, we've got a competition running at the moment, and it's called Around the World in Eighty Ways, and we're basically giving a, a listener a chance to fly anywhere around the world. You don't need to know this. You only need to answer this question. Okay. Kim Deal from the Breeders is with me now on Triple J. Kim, if you won, if you won around the world in, no, sorry, um, Kim. If you could travel anywhere in the world tomorrow, where would you go? Dayton, Ohio. Oh, get out of there. It's just up the road. <laughs> I can't say Dayton. If you could travel anywhere out of America tomorrow, where would you go? Australia. And why? Uh, never been there before. Do you know anything about us? No. Do you even no, know whether you'd like us? You were a penal colony. Oh, well, thanks. <laughs> so were you. <laughs> we were pre- religious, persecuted religious people. <laughs> you guys were criminals. <laughs> I know, that's why you'll like us better. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Thanks for that. I'll let you fly. Okay. I, hope you, I hope you guys get out here and tour soon. Oh, I, I do too. Okay. Okay, bye. Bye, Kim. <laughs>